Hmm, that can't be right. Oh, but what if they're real after all? No, that can't be. Mm, but what if there's a chance? Greetings, miss. Is there something that's bothering you? Oh, no, it's nothing. I'm Della Roche, the representative of the Fontaine Fishing Association. How can I help you? Oh, so you're adventurers. Oh, finally. Someone has heard my prayers. Paimon could tell you were really bothered by something. Don't worry, you've got two super experienced adventurers right here. We'll take care of anything and everything for you as long as you pay us a little bit of mora. Oh, you are exactly the helpers I need. See, the problem is that the fish around a fishing spot at Arrhenius have just all up and vanished recently. They disappeared too quickly for it to have been the work of human anglers. As the representative of the fishing association, I had planned to go and investigate the area right away. <clears throat> right, but unfortunately, as the representative of the fishing association, there are a few other errands that I absolutely have to run, so... So you'd like us to investigate the spot for you? Exactly. You're right on the Mora. So I thought I could delegate this work to you. Are you two some kind of prophets, knowing exactly what I was going to say like that? Or maybe like the oracles you read about in fairy tales? Yeah, we're just really experienced in this kind of thing, that's all. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll get a good night's sleep knowing the two of you are on the case. But don't we just need to investigate the missing fish? It really doesn't sound too difficult. No, you mustn't let your guard down. As the representative of the Fishing Association, I have good reason to believe that the fish have gone missing due to an encounter with the water imps. Yes, you're both outlanders, right? Our local fairy tales often speak of a terrifying underwater creature called Thelxie. The story our parents would tell us was always the same. If we went to the water alone, then we'd be snatched away and eaten by a water imp called Thelxie. A child eating water imp? Did they tell you what it looked like? My father would always describe it as a beautiful, multicolored snake woman, while my mother said it had a handsome face. It's really strange, though, because you'd also hear other people describe it as just a chubby penguin with a deceptive appearance. Even though the tales vary regarding its appearance, everyone agrees that it's really dangerous. It lives in an underwater cave surrounded by pallid bones and uses its sensitive nose to track down lonely children who've lost their way. And once it finds a child, it uses its alluring singing voice to lure them into the water before swallowing them all. Pretty terrifying, isn't it? Uh, sounds kind of scary. But isn't that pretty normal for a fairy tale? After all, those kinds of stories are usually made up to help keep children away from danger. But what if the fairy tale was inspired by a real-life tale? Just like how a water vein always has a source. Well, I wouldn't call it evidence, per se, but I've heard some rumors lately. They say that someone recently saw a child walk into the water as if he was possessed by something. Doesn't that sound just like he was responding to the call of a water imp? So you mean someone really got eaten by a water imp? It's all hearsay, so it's hard to confirm. But still, they all say this happened on Irenaeus. That's no laughing matter if you ask me. Both the Opera House and the Fountain of Lucene were built there, and the sources of many water veins can be traced to the island as well. Combine that with the mysterious mist, the huge tree with expansive underground roots, and the rumor that the fish ships on the island can understand human language. Is it really so shocking that an island so shrouded in mystery could harbor a terrifying water imp as well? Oh, uh, why does Paimon feel like you're pulling our leg? You're just piling on the rumors now. Oh, still, if someone's really been hurt, then we can't just ignore the situation, right, Traveler? 
Oh, marvelous. Then I'll just mark the stretch of water on your map. Don't forget that no matter what, safety always comes first. God, I was still wearing this. Rumine! Paimon, are you okay? <sighs> Paimon nearly mistook you for a water imp. Thank goodness it was just you wearing your helmet. Huh? A water imp? Thelxy, you say? How surprising. Huh? You know that name, too? Or do you know someone else who's trying to investigate the water imp? No. I think our situations are probably unrelated. Sure, if that's in order. I know the name because of one of my employers. She noticed the clockwork penguins I brought to the workshop and contacted me through the shop's owner. She has commissioned me to make a special toy. Following her request, I've named the toy Thelxy. Huh? But isn't it a little creepy to name a toy after a water imp? Uh, wait, hold on! Fremina, you never take commissions from other people! Yeah, but, uh, she made a special request. But out of respect for her privacy, I can't really talk about it. It's alright, though. She'll be coming over to check on my progress shortly, and I'll just tell her that you're two of my trustworthy companions. Hearing that, she might be willing to share some information, and you'll be able to continue with your investigation. Huh. Even though you seem a little cold and reserved sometimes, you're still really considerate. Our target isn't necessarily the water imp, though. We're primarily here to investigate the disappearance of the fish! The fish? I think I may have connected the dots. These past few weeks, I've been taking Thelxy for underwater testing every day. The pressure testing makes a lot of noise. So, all that about the disappearing fish? Well, it was probably because of me. Yes, I think that's quite likely as well. Whew! So in the end, it was just Fremine! Paimon spent all this time imagining what a water imp from the fairy tales might look like, and it all turns out to be just a hoax! I'm sorry. 
It sounds like I've created a lot of trouble for everyone else as well. I'll try to finish this commission as soon as possible. Once I'm done, the fish should come back. Thank you. Actually, how much work do you still have left, Remini? Maybe we could lend you a hand. Ah, uh, thanks for offering. But I can't trouble you any more than I already have. Hey, it's no trouble at all. Didn't you just call us your trustworthy companions? Companions are all about helping each other, you know? But... don't you need to report back to your commissioner? Nope, that's not how it works. See, Paimon's got these commissioner types all figured out, even though we were just tasked with finding out why the fish had gone missing. If we tell them now that it was all just a misunderstanding, you can bet they'd just immediately hand us another commission to help them get the fish back. Exactly! So if we can help you finish up your work and get the fish back, that would save us an extra trip! Um, is that what you'd like to do as well? Huh. Alright, I'll trust your judgment. Please follow me. I've made a makeshift camp over there. Let's move out. Huh? I've stored Thelxi in the tent. He can respond to some simple verbal commands. You can try calling his name and see if he'll come over. Whoa, sounds pretty advanced. Let Paimon give it a try. Hey, Thelxi, uh, are you there? So that's Fremenet's version of Thelxi. It's also penguin shaped, just like Pear. Yep. Had Thelxi lived in Penguin Town, he'd probably have become great friends with Pear. Uh, it's not really anywhere famous or important. Don't worry about it. Hey, Thelxie. Nice to meet you. Do you know how to say hello? I wanted to install a language output module, but due to time constraints, I had to give up on the idea. As it stands, Thelxie can only output messages that were pre-written into its motherboard. I haven't given him the ability to convert those messages into discernible words, so he can't really talk to us just yet. Uh, no need to get so technical. So basically, you want us to help you complete and install this language module, right? Uh, no, there's no need. That wasn't one of my employer's requests. It was just something I wanted to try. I have two other things I'd like your help with. The first is to do some integration testing on Thelxie's motherboard, to make sure he will be able to function properly in most situations. That doesn't sound too hard. And what's the other thing? The other shouldn't take too long either. You'll need to find Thelxy some colorful shells and coral, so I can craft a weapon for him. A weapon? Will Thelxy have to fight? Mm-hmm. Thelxy will need to be able to charge forward with a weapon in hand. Like that brave prince of legend. It's a part of my employer's request. What an imaginative employer! Naming Thelxy after a water imp? But wanting him to look like a prince? Well, regardless of his role or species, Thelxie's purpose is the same. Just like Pear, he has come to this world to serve as somebody's companion. Whoa, Thelxie just said something again! Could he understand what we were just talking about? He can react to certain key words, but unfortunately, due to the lack of a translation module, he still can't quite communicate with us. That's a pity. But anyway, the most important thing right now is for us to get to work. Maybe let's start by doing some testing on the... motherboard. That sounds like something we can do here in the camp. Sounds good. The motherboard is on my workbench, so please follow me. Ah, 
Here we go. I have this testing manual, so feel free to reference it if you get stuck. Want to give it a try? It's okay if you don't succeed immediately. I've got a lot of backup boards just in case. Okay. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. doing well. Just as I expected. We've taken on a lot of similar tasks before, you know. Then let's move on to the underwater part. It's just as I mentioned earlier. We're after colorful shells and coral. Oh, speaking of which, you're both already pretty used to Fontaine's underwater environment, right? Okay, that's good. Just let me know if you ever feel uncomfortable. I'll make sure to stay right by your side. something that'll help us with our search. This is it. We call this thing an echoing conch. It can detect spectral. Did you notice any interesting places? The echoing conch should have detected some just now. Let's go check them out. Let's head back to camp. Uh, thank you for staying out here with me all this time. Ah, Fremine, you're back. I thought you might have been out diving. I'm sorry, Madame Destray. I must have kept you waiting. I can report, though, that the construction of Thelxi is going quite smoothly. There's no rush. I'm your employer, not your supervisor. And these two are... Oh, uh, they're two of my trustworthy companions. They're here to help me work on Thelxi. Yes, I see. I suppose it's only natural for someone responsible like you to have some reliable friends. It's really nice to meet you, Madame Destre. Are you Fremenay's employer? Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler! Greetings, my new friends. Just call me Zoria. You are both so adorable. The sight of you reminds me of little fairies under a cottage roof. Oh, do you really think so? Of course. If my child had friends like you, then perhaps he wouldn't have become so obsessed with the tales of water imps. And I wouldn't have had to trouble Fremine here with this commission. Obsessed with the tales of water imps? Ah, oh, so you don't know anything about my request yet? I would have thought Fremine had explained it to you already. Well, Fremine told us that it was a private matter, so he didn't want to just share it willy-nilly. I see. So Monsieur Fremine is even more discreet than I had thought. Hmm. As you are assisting him with the project, I believe it'll be beneficial for you to learn more about its vision and history. 
But it would be quite impolite of me to simply pile all of my troubles on you without your permission. So, would you like to listen to my story? Sure, you can tell us anything. You've already said nice things about us, so we'll try our best to help you get through your troubles. Ah, what a lovely little fairy. Then let me think of a way to put my situation into words. Hmm. I'm sure you're already familiar with the tale of the water imps, right? Simply put, parents came up with a story, painting water imps as scary abductors in an effort to convince their children to stay away from the water. My child is rather special, however. While most other children are terrified of Thalxi, he's infatuated with him. In... infatuated? With a water imp? What a brave soul. Yes. He told me that he thought the water imp might have just been misunderstood. In his mind, instead of singing to abduct children, the water imp actually sang out of a longing for companionship. As a result, he often goes near the water in secret. Ah. So he wanted to become friends with the water imp so it wouldn't be lonely any longer? What a unique way of thinking. <laughs> Thank you, little Paimon. He indeed has always stood out from the crowd. He was actually diagnosed with loneliness syndrome when he was only eight years old. Mm-hmm. It's a type of mental disorder. Those affected by it often feel extremely lonely and lose interest in many mundane activities. The syndrome is probably what made him so determined to become friends with the water imp. Oh no! Is it a very serious disorder? <clears throat> if you were to become afflicted with the disorder, Paimon, you would only be able to say less than a fraction of the words you're saying to the Traveler now. No! Paimon won't accept that! We would have to find a doctor to help cure Paimon! Paimon has a 2,000 word quota for daily conversations with the Traveler and she won't settle! The family doctor has already begun to treat my son, but since the disorder is rare, there aren't many good regimens for treatment. He's also developed some new symptoms lately, such as uncontrollable delusions. Huh? Uncontrollable what now? Uncontrollable delusions. To put it simply, he can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality and spends all his time in his fantasy world. Then... then what is he seeing in his fantasy world? It's a dream that he often mentioned to me when he was younger. I've compiled what I could understand of his recent rambling. It goes a bit like this. Amazing! Your son came up with all of this? He really crafted a lovely fairy tale world for Thelxy. It's like a beautiful dream. But perhaps no beautiful dream can ever last long. You see, the story ended with a twist. son to develop his loneliness syndrome? Well, it'd be more accurate to say that it was the syndrome that caused such terrible delusions to manifest. 
But in any case, the biggest problem is the patient eventually loses themselves to the fantasy world of their own creation. My poor child can no longer differentiate between imagination and reality. He's begun to see himself as Thelxi. Um, perhaps in his mind, the loneliness he felt became the same as that of a prince who lost everything he ever loved or stood for. What? So that's what you meant by uncontrollable delusions. Then we have to help him snap out of it! Alas, most of the time he acts as if he can no longer sense or interact with the real world at all. I've had several discussions with the doctor, and we think it is best to try to guide his fantasy. He once wanted to make a picture book of his imaginary world, but since the disorder progressed too quickly, he never quite got past the first page of the book. If we could use this book as a breakthrough for his condition... Here, you can take a look. Ah! So Zuri's son also saw Felixie as a penguin. Oh, he looks so sad. What we should do now is help him complete this picture book. However, we'll lead the story to a different ending. One where the Water Imp Prince is eventually able to restore his kingdom with the help of his friends. We'll need to chase away his loneliness and sorrow, and let him perceive a world full of hope again. That's what I mean by guiding his fantasy. But if we just need to finish the picture book, why does Fermine need to make a Thelxi as well? Because we need to treat the book's story seriously, as if it's a history of things that have really happened. We'll need to go on a journey like Thelxi and help him regain his crown and country. But my child can no longer go on a journey of his own. This is why I commissioned Fremine here to craft a Thelxi, and then I'll paint the journey with this Thelxi into the picture book. Ah, like a stand-in for your son! Paimon's starting to get it now! Oh, you really put a lot of thought into this, Zuria. Um... Paimon still has one question, though. Where will we be able to find a Water Imp Kingdom? There are some ruins on the seabed of the Salacia Plains. I've already asked Fremine to research them for me. We'll be able to use one of the ruins as the kingdom. Oh, so we'll just need to act out a performance of, uh... Oh, a brave journey through the Kingdom of Water Imps. As long as we chase away the monsters in the ruins, it'll count as chasing away the monsters in the Water Imp Kingdom, right? Sadly, no. We won't just be putting on a performance. It's just as Zuria said. We need to take this seriously. And the only way we can take this seriously is if we choose to believe everything that's happening is real. Uh, so we'll be playing it straight? Or, uh, making it a fully immersive experience? Oh, neither of those really sound right. Uh... Hey, we'll still be able to help, right? It's all right. There's no need to get that serious. It's not a big deal. I believe in my son. We can just see this as him wanting to stay asleep for a bit longer because he's so enamored with his dream. <sighs> Zuria. Keep your spirits up, everyone. If we were to look troubled, my son is sure to become anxious as well. Hmm. I should be heading back right about now to check on my son. We temporarily moved to a place on the hill over there, so my son will have a better spot to convalesce. It's not far from the water, and there's also a great view. Feel free to come find me if anything urgent comes up. Understood. There's also one last thing. Since these two friends were able to help me out, I've made some more progress on Thelxi. I estimate that he should be ready sometime tomorrow. That's great news. I must thank you all. Hmm. With that in mind, how about we meet here in two days' time to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps? All right, everyone. Let's meet again in another two days. Zuria sure is a brave and optimistic lady. Fremine, do you think her plan will work out? Uh, let's discuss that over by the tent. 
There were a few things that I didn't bring up because the Madame was here. What is it, Fremenet? What did you want to say? <clears throat> um, if you don't mind me asking, I would like the two of you to mentally prepare yourselves. This is the first time that you've met anyone with the syndrome, right? I know you two are both really strong and will do everything you can to help the child. But with the syndrome being the way it is, if things don't... If things don't quite turn out as we wish, I hope you'll be able to accept the outcome, and not put too much blame on yourselves. Fremenet, why do you bring this up all of a sudden? Didn't we just promise Zuria that we'll be optimistic about everything working out? It's not that I'm not optimistic. It's... Ah, so that's why you looked like you knew exactly what she was talking about. Wait, Fremenet, don't tell Paimon that you also... No, no. Please don't misunderstand. I've never had it. I've just... I've just seen many cases of it at the House of the Hearth, back when we lived under the previous director. They say there are many factors surrounding the development of this illness. I've heard everything from hereditary factors and one state of mind, to environmental factors and even leyline disorder effects. Some even say it could be caused by contamination from god remains. And from the cases I've seen, there weren't many positive outcomes. In the worst cases, the patient could even... pass away. What? It could get that serious? And here Paimon thought they'd just stop talking as much. <sighs> yeah. That's just the nature of it. So, if you'll find it difficult to cope with the worst-case scenario, I would prefer that you back out right now. I don't want you to help only to feel like you failed. Yeah, that's right. Paimon's seen all of those things, too. No matter how hard it might get, we won't be scared. Really? <sighs> then in that case... Let's see this real-life fantasy adventure together to the end. Yeah! Uh, but Paimon has a question. If this illness can really be as bad as you've described, then do you really think Zuria's method will be able to help? After all, we'll just be using a toy as Delxie and some ruins as the Kingdom of Water Imps. The whole adventure will only be turned into a picture book for her son to read. Well... I think it should be able to do something. To harbor a fantasy means that the child wants to save himself somehow. The only reason he's allowed his dream kingdom to fall is because he's lost control of his heart. But if we can help him regain control and escape from the darkness, we'll be able to change his world. Like helping someone who's lost their voice be able to speak again. Paimon sees what you're saying now. Huh. How do you understand all of this so well, Fremenet? Eh? Hmm. Well, maybe because I have also had many of my own dreams in the past. I even had my own fairy tale world, much like that boy's. I was able to draw a lot of support from it. So I believe in the power of fantasy worlds. Ah. Uh. So you remembered. What Penguin Town? Why doesn't Paimon remember? Is that also a fairy tale world? Don't leave Paimon in the dark! Hey! Why did you put that on? <clears throat> it's just one of my personal quirks. Please pay it no mind. Anyway, Penguin Town is a peaceful place with lots of penguin residents. 
they're all really good at making clockwork toys. And Pear is the town's triumphant hero, as well as the one who quietly protects the whole place. Pear? But didn't you make Pear yourself? Well, I often think that Pear only came to me because he realized how much I needed him. So it's not so much that I made Pear, as Pear chose me as his friend. Uh, Femine, are you sure you're not losing control of your fantasies as well? No, I don't think so. I can still differentiate between fantasy and reality. I just believe that the fairy tale world of my dreams must also exist somewhere. It might just be hidden, which is why it's difficult to see. Or it will only reveal itself at very specific times. Specific times? Like when you put on your diving helmet? Yeah. That's the general idea of it. Really? Pyra just said that because you put on your helmet. Have you ever observed the surface world from underwater? It's as if you're viewing a whole different world from the outside. It's a very surreal feeling. Both alienating, but also as if you're being protected by something. I have a similar feeling when I put on my diving helmet. In those moments, it's possible to see some truly wondrous things, as if a fairy tale has become reality. It's almost like a sort of miracle. Really? Like a miracle? Well, if that's in order. Hey, don't you still need time to work on Felxie's weapon? We don't want to keep you from finishing your commission. Right. I still have to collect some tools I'll need to craft the weapon. I've got to finish everything before tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me, Paimon. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for you to try my helmet. Thanks for all of your help. I'll be off for now. Let's meet up here again in two days. <laughs>